the world has changed so much and people's expectations of themselves are so much higher, aren't they? Everybody's looking at their friends on, on Snapchat and Facebook and the, <laughs> the wonderful lives that they have and they think, well, why aren't I doing that? Why, how, how come I'm on a Friday night watching the telly at home on my own? You know, the expectations mm -hmm. that people feel that they ought to live up to put a huge amount of pressure on people. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to this episode of Diversifying Data. Um, so this month is Mental Health um, Awareness Month in the US and it's also Mental Health Week in the UK. So that is the theme of this episode. So I'm Ellen Hitchcock um, and I'm joined today by the wonderful David Burnham and he is a principal consultant and mental health first aider for Kubrick. So it's great to have you on the podcast. So Thanks welcome. Thanks very much, Ellen. Thank you. Amazing. So yeah, so welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, so mental health, obviously, um, it's becoming more and more recognised, I'd say, within organisations today. Um, and I think as well, becoming recognised just as important as physical health. Um, so I think, you know, today it's great to have a, open them conversations just to talk a little bit more why it is so important. Mm -hmm. So I think just to start with then, um, obviously I've mentioned the Mental Health First Aiders, which is a fantastic initiative that Kubrick has started. And I know we've both briefly mm -hmm. spoke off camera just a little bit how that came about and how the programme started. So I think it'd be great for the listeners just to hear a little bit on how that started and how you sort of brought that to Kubrick. So, so I, I joined Kubrick about a year ago as, a, as an instructor on the, the data engineering course. Um, and... Before that, I, I had worked as, as, as the head of, of data and AI for, for a, a consultancy company. And I, I got involved with the Mental Health First Aid initiative at, at, at the, my, my previous company, where, where I was running a, a fairly large team of consultants. Um, and um, it, we, we, were, we, we were all working on customer sites mainly before the pandemic. Um, and then the pandemic hit. And, um, and, and it moved our way of working to, to being completely remote. And it also in, increased our workload an enormous amount. We, we, we found that, um, we, we suspected that, that we were worried about our workload drying up, really, because um, nobody knew what was going to happen with the pandemic. Um, but we found that, that companies needed, uh, needed capabilities to, to use their data more effectively. And they came to us. And, and we, we, we saw our business sort of grow by about 50% overnight. Um, so we were all working really, really hard to, 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 actually, um, to, to actually service our customers. And they, they, they asked for volunteers for who could, who could, who could help uh, our, 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 our people w with any problems they were having with their mental health. Um, who, who, could, who could be, you know, sounding points and, and, and just... just signpost people to the, the most appropriate resources that could help them um, cope with their mental health because the pandemic was a really scary time um, people changed their work working habits at, at, at the company I was working for enormously they were under an enormous amount of pressure because we were all very very busy and everybody had to deliver things um, much more quickly and, and, and under much more pressure than they they, 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 they did have to previously uh, so so it was quite it was quite quite a bit of foresight on, on, the, on the management of the company to put people through that. So I, I was one of the first cohort to go through this the mental health first, first aid training. Um, and I think it was about two days training o spread over a week. Um, and w w w what we learned that, that the, the main sort of uh, the main thrust of, of the uh, of certainly of the first day was was on a, an acronym called ALGI, which which is how how you if you think somebody is suffering from mental health problems, um, how, and, and, and it's an acute episode that they're having, how you can help them, and that's that that that's to to uh, to approach and assess the, the situation that they're in to make sure you're safe and they're safe, of course. Um, but but to, uh, to 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 then listen in a sort of non-judgmental way and and see what's what's troubling them, what's 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 their problem, if they're prepared to talk about it. Um, and 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 the the G is is about giving uh, giving support and help and 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 helping them through the immediate crisis that they've got and and the two E's are about encourage encouraging them to to find professional help to to, to find the the professional help resources who who can who can um, who who can help them get over the acute sort of uh, 
sort of problems that they're having and also to encourage them that you know there's a way forward and there are lots of sort of self-help options as well that, that you can think things that you can do and make tweaks in your life just to 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 give you more calm and and to and to stop stop you feeling such anxiety or to remove you from some of the situations that maybe are causing causing you mental health difficulties no that all sounds very useful and so interesting to hear as well and I think then so when you underwent that training previously when you back came over then to Kubrick was it quite similar or was there things that were slightly different or added on to the training well I'd, I'd heard that, that they were asking for volunteers to do the training I said well actually I've already done it uh, so <laughs> so I, I and I, I really just put my name forward and said you know I, I'm, I'm quite happy for people to contact me if they've got mental health problems and and and, and there are there there are you know dynamics and issues that that people need to be aware of you know I'm, I'm an instructor for some of the classes and maybe they wouldn't want to come to me directly but maybe people you know in the sales department or or, or in um, client services or or, or, or in um, or in our admin facilities everybody can struggle with their mental health and, and you know I'm, I'm I'm happy to be be somebody who can who can help people initially and point them to the right things that they they can they can change or do or or get professional support no definitely and I think so when, if someone does, you know, need the support of the mental health first aiders, sort of how do they go about approaching any of the mental health first aiders? Just because I can imagine for some people they might be quite vocal, but for others mm. they might feel quite nervous or shy, kind of like what you've said. If it's someone in, you know, um, someone that you've trained before previously or someone that's in a team where their leader is a mental health first aider, just how they can go about of approaching you guys? So, so I, th I think we have quite quite a lot of material on the, the company notice boards, on team and and. and uh, Facebook uh, workplace, uh, so so the, there are there are definitely sort of signposts there for, uh, with a list of the mental health first aiders. I think there's about seven or eight of us at the moment. So so there are you have a choice. Um, <laughs> I don't mind how you approach me. You could message me. You 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 can uh, get in contact with me via email. You you can just uh, send me a video call if uh, if you catch me on Teams and. Um, uh, if necessary, you know, I, I'll, I'll come in and actually meet people face to face or, 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 or you know, have, have calls with people. But whatever, whatever, whatever's needed to get them through the, the, the problem that they're, they're, they're suffering from at, at the moment. And, you know, it, it's a case of it, with all of the mental health first aiders, it's about providing that initial support and the signposting for the resources that, that can help them uh, sort of through the crisis and to change what's in their life that's causing them, them the stress and, and, and the, the anxiety or the mental health problems that they're, they're dealing with. Yeah, and with that, I think it's great that, like you said, that there is a number of ways, because like you said, I know we've briefly spoken about it, that some people might feel more comfortable just sending a message or some people would rather like have that face-to-face -face interaction. So I think that there is a range of methods that people can reach out. It's not just that direct, like, hey, you have to come up to me mm. in person in the office, because I can imagine yeah. for a lot of people that is quite a daunting yes. Yes, thing, so especially with such a sensitive... Um, thing that might be going on in someone's life at that current time yes yes you always have to be aware of the sensitivities and you know any anything that that's said to, to a mental health first aider must be kept in confidence unless it's unless there's a, a safeguarding issue an issue that somebody th is going to do themselves some harm I, I wouldn't dream of, of, of talking about conversations that I'd had with 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 people who come to me on that on that sort of basis it's entirely private and I can imagine then with that so I can imagine you get quite a lot of um, different issues that you know, come to any of the mental health facilities. And I think just to have a little bit of understanding sort of where like you'd point them in terms of resources or any channels. I know you've obviously talked about workplace and things like that, mm. but I can imagine it does dependent on case by case, but just kind of an overview on where you might point someone if depending, I, like I said, I can understand it's probably quite varied, you know, the mm. issues that come to you, but just kind of a brief overlook of what potentially where you would point them so in in terms of in terms of the, the sort of professional services that are available the, the the national health service is a good place to start your your, your doctor and and actually um if, if it's a serious mental health issue that that's a, that's a good place to start it might take a bit of a while to get get treatment they only really treat people who who have acute problems um but also i think on perk box we have a a, a service where um I don't, I don't know whether they offer things like cognitive behavioural therapy and, 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 and services like that. That's, that's somewhere else I, I, I'd look um, for, 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 um, for, for support there. Um, it really depends on what the, what the, the, you know, the problem that they're, they're, they're suffering, suffering with. We've, we've done some work with uh, a company called Mental Health Initiatives, um, and they run a service called Shout, um, 
uh, which you, you can find on the internet and, and that they, they provide a text-based service where you can you can send volunteers a, a text message to to talk about um, the, the the crises that you're you're suffering with if, if you're having acute problems um, so, so there are there are a number of places where, where we can we can signpost people for, for more support and help and and give you know none of us are, are professional psychiatrists or, or psychologists so n n as, as far as I know none, none of us have a qualification like that um, so, so, so it, it you know th there is only so much that you can do and it's about it's about helping people through the acute problems mm -hmm. that they're suffering and getting them them, them the right level of, of support and help I think like what you've just said that even just having that initial contact as a signposter right this mm. is the next step you know you're the initial contact but be able to make them aware that from obviously reaching out that's a huge first step for a lot of people yes. and I think just being able to be you know we can help and this is like where we can point you yeah. I think it's obviously great obviously that you guys offer that but I think like you know we've briefly touched on it you know it can be quite daunting to obviously start that initial conversation so I think just from you know do you have any experience yourself or any advice you might have uh, for people that might go about sharing their mental health struggles with, you know, their line manager, a colleague or, you know, even a loved one? I, I think th I, th I think I would I, I mean, I would probably go to a friend or a loved one, providing they're not the person that's causing the mental health problems. Yeah. You know, that obviously, you know, if you're, you're in a difficult relationship, then then they're not the person to talk to um, a, a parent or a family member or a sibling, definitely somebody to, to op open up to. Um, some people actually like would prefer to you know there's such a stigma about mental health and there really shouldn't be um, but 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 some people would prefer to talk to a stranger you know to yeah. some, and have that isolation um, of, of somebody who doesn't know them intimately so so it, it really varies for, 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 for people but that first step of taking and talking about those mental health problems is, is so important um, and it's, it's important to realize that for a lot of of mental health conditions that, that they are eminently treatable you don't have to suffer and be miserable in your life the, 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 there are you know a lot of people in this in this modern age where people are under pressure suffer from anxiety they feel that they're not up to the job that they've they've got they feel imposter syndrome and and all of that kind of anxiety is eminently treatable the success rate for treating anxiety is is 80 to 90 percent of people get get relief through things like cognitive behavioral therapy and and relaxation and and, and meditation and things like that they're, they're very effective at, at dealing you know once you can recognize what the anxiety is and that you've accepted that you you you've got it and, and need to do something about it um, it's eminently treatable and you don't have to live with it or worry about it or impact your life so so that taking that first step Ellen is is absolutely mm -hmm. critical in in helping people to a better future to, to a happier future definitely and I think opening them conversations mm -hmm. I know last week we did a video with our head of DI Dana who's absolutely mm -hmm. incredible and she just kind of opened the doors to talking about anxiety and I think hearing someone just speak so freely so openly as if you know she was talking about she just put a wash on or something mm -hmm. and I think it's breaking down and having them conversation and normalizing it because I think you know a lot of people I think you know what you were saying in high pressure jobs I think a lot of people can kind of see it as a form of weakness which it's absolutely not and I think you know speaking about it because I think when you fester it and leave it to yourself it can almost become a much bigger issue than it like actually needs to be yeah and I think you know having them initial conversations like hey you know this is something that I'm struggling with talking about in your workplace is something that you know will actually relieve the burden from you almost and mm. I think you know especially at Kubrick I feel like we do have quite an inclusive environment where I feel anyway since I've joined that I feel very comfortable to be able to go and speak to you know my manager or there is people within the company that I could go to and say hey I'm feeling like this whereas I mean I can imagine maybe in other companies it might not be the case but I think it's really important like you said just to be opening them initial conversation saying we are here for you if you need help but I think kind of what you've touched on with the whole pandemic I think that has completely changed the way the world works now and you know with you know hybrid working or you know some people are fully remote and I think it is really important just to be checking in you know how are you because you like mm. when we briefly spoke before you know when it was the height of the pandemic you didn't really know how your team might have been actually feeling or if people are living alone you know it was a huge mm. adjustment for many people massive um so i think you know you recognizing that 
we needed this initiative, especially within Kubrick, I think is something that's just really important. Yeah, I, I, our consultants are under a huge amount of pressure. They, you know, the, the, the stuff I've learned over 20 years, we stuff into like <laughs> 15 weeks of training and we, we have tests of them and, you know, they have to pass the tests or, or they, they don't continue with us um the, the, uh, there's there's all sorts of stress like that there's will they find uh, you know the economic situation has changed and maybe it's not looking as diff- as, e- as easy to get an assignment now um all of these things are are, are, are on a great stress on, on on our consultants and it's so important that they don't let these things get out of hand because because it impacts their ability to learn if you're stressed all the time yeah. you can't possibly learn new things um and and you know, it is a high-pressure environment. We 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 need to be supportive to our people. That's just just uh, that the world has changed so much, and um, and people's expectations of themselves are so much higher, aren't they? That, that you know, every everybody's looking at, at at their friends on on Snapchat and Facebook and the <laughs> the wonderful lives that they have, and they think, well, why aren't I doing that? Why? How how come I'm on a Friday night watching the telly at home on my own? You know. Uh, and and it's it's the expectations mm-hmm. that people feel that they ought to live up to put a huge amount of pressure on people. No, definitely. And I think leading on from that, I think it's really important just to be having, you know, mechanisms in place if you are feeling a certain way, just to be able to cope, you know, with the pressures and stress or if you are facing any, you know, mental health challenges. I know for me, a huge thing that helps me is exercise you know putting my headphones yes. in if i've had a like stressful day and sometimes i can feel myself getting agitated at a laptop i'll just be like i'm gonna go out do a 30 minute run or go to the gym and that's a real big stress mm. relief for me and i think it's really important to try and recognize what works for an individual because what works for me might not work for someone else but i think you know for yourself do you have anything in particular that does help with I, your i, I am so lucky where i live <laughs> i live on the south downs and oh. close to the sea and and i love walking i love being mm. out in the countryside and i think i think that helps a lot of people I, you know I, you're right everybody is different um i used to i used to really like almost competitive cycling i, I used to I, oh, d- wow. I used to do mountain biking but i used to do road cycling as well and there's there's actually in that kind of exercise there's a sort of place you get yourself to where you're you're not quite switched off, but you're you're concerned with turning the pedals and and moving through the air and and staying in in a peloton and 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 that's all become sort of automatic because you know you're not re- it's not something you have to think about once you've learned to do it, and it, finding something like that that I think there's a, there's actually a, a term for it called flow where you're concentrating enough but you're zoned out a little bit and i used to find that incredibly relaxing i i I, uh, physically demanding but but actually mentally relaxing um yeah uh, funnily enough things like decorating actually do do it for me as well painting you know painting walls um and and ceilings because it's it's a brain off activity it's just you know you can do it and it's automatic it's funny you say about painting um me and my friends when we're at university when really random when we used to get a little bit stressed out we always used to put i don't know if you've seen it bob ross no. he's a professional painter and <laughs> oh my god there used to be about like an hour episode but it was the most therapeutic thing to watch he'd be painting like these mountain ranges and so therapeutic oh, um, but it switched you off put a smile on your face and i think like you said everyone is different people find different things that yeah. to be able to cope but you know, especially I'd say from like a stress standpoint, I feel like everybody goes through stress. I just think some people maybe might be better at managing stress, especially, you know, in the workplace. And I think from your end, you know, with having worked and everything, you know, for everyone, would you say that you have particular coping mechanisms to cope with stress? Or do you feel like that you might not get that as such? So I, I, d- I did have a stressful job with with a, a, a very sales led organization and 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 I, I you know I, I wasn't I didn't have a sales target but my part of the, the world wasn't making its sales target so there's a lot of pressure put on on me about that and and I did suffer with a bit of anxiety and and I, how I I sort of I, <laughs> It was that first step of realizing that, that mm. actually you're not having a heart attack. <laughs> this this is anxiety, and this it makes yeah. you it makes your chest stiff and makes your your heart beat faster than it should. Um, and the first step was actually realizing that 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 was anxiety, and that's what it is. And I, I read a very good book um, about about um, anxiety, and I can't remember the title of it. But basically, it it said think of anxiety, think of something that you do for leisure that that is actually 
quite scary and I do mountain biking and I used to do jumps until I had a few accidents and broke a few of my bones so I don't do that anymore <laughs> um, but I, I, when I was feeling anxious I'd visualise myself at the top of a big drop that I was going to do and I'd think this is the same feeling that you've got um, when you're just about to do some a bit of a scary jump as you're feeling now but it's appropriate in the scary jump because you're going to need to react really quickly and you ought to be ready for for it because you'll end up broken <laughs> at the bottom <laughs> of the jump otherwise um so once i got to feeling that i'd sort of when the anxiety came on oh, come on bring it on then because i'm going to do something exciting here and it would sort of it would sort of um uh, uh, relax then it would help me relax now everybody's different and I don't I, I don't think that's it might not work for everybody that kind of thing but I think the important thing is to realize that that anxiety is actually it's it's not it's it's, it's not some terrible um disease that hardly anybody suffers for and you're weak because you are everybody gets this kind of yeah. kind of feeling almost everybody has anxiety about some things if you don't have anxiety about some things if you don't care enough about things to get worried i probably don't want to know you you know what i mean <laughs> um so so everybody has these feelings and and it's accepting that first step of uh, uh, and understanding its anxiety is the way that you can get treatment and I, I had very very mild anxiety I just you know it made me worried and breathless and things like that it wasn't you know it, it wasn't debilitating and I, I understand that that people have anxiety mm -hmm. and they let it get worse and it becomes completely debilitating to their lives but the, there are treatments for, the, for it uh, very effective treatments and it's so it's, it's crossing that first step of thinking this isn't normal this isn't some defect in me this yeah. can be treated let's 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 move on to a better future because it, it's there for you and I think with the anxiety that I know obviously you've said you've experienced did you struggle when you know you've been in the workplace did you was it something that you felt quite comfortable going to you know, a colleague so no i didn't however the company did have lots of um medical uh, plans and things like that who i could have gone to i didn't in the end to be fair but i could have gone to and actually got professional help things like cognitive behavioral therapy and things like that so so you know the, there are resources that are available to do this and I, it's um you know that 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 you you can use, and I think I think we offer them with Perkbox. I think I think that's that kind of kind of support is available there. I think it's really interesting as well what you've touched on, just with that sort of macho culture as well that does occur. You know, especially in you know sales driven teams or like companies, things like that. And I think touching on that, it's you know for men especially, I think that's something that they might females perhaps more feel more comfortable to be able to voice and speak up mm. you know that hey I'm feeling this way whereas what you've touched on um and I even think it's the case for a lot of people even in 2023 it's for men that they they don't feel comfortable that they're like I'm not hitting this target and get more worked up more anxious and they kind of do see it to themselves as a sign of weakness to ask for that help and I think just from that standpoint do you have any advice for any men that may be listening and they kind of feel you know I can't speak up I don't want to look like I'm slightly weak if I say that you know I'm going through this or I'm feeling this kind of way yes I mean it can be really difficult because you know uh, there are often men who, who who inhabit that world at workplace but also in their social lives as well you know they play competitive mm -hmm. rugby or something like that and the idea of saying you know I, I I've got I've got problems might be difficult for them but what I would suggest is just you know I'd, uh, Amongst your friends, maybe rather than than your your workplace colleagues, yeah. do voice it. Do say I'm struggling with this. It's giving me problems because they, they you might be surprised that they've had similar similar issues themselves and have found solutions for them. It, it, it's you know so so I would you know it's that it's the, it's that first step, isn't it, Ellen? It's, yeah. it's finding somebody who's 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 going to be. Um, uh, Em empathetic to to what you're you're feeling and understanding the way you go through because fundamentally you know it's 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 not a defect in you it's the the world has changed and and continues to change at an accelerating pace and it's really hard for for people to keep up and and and, and actually mm -hmm. keep keep effective and keep keep sane in this world it's no definitely and i think touching on that as well in terms of like from an organization organization standpoint do you think what anything more organizations could be doing i know obviously we've touched on like having mental health first aiders and you know resources in place but do you think there's anything else that perhaps organizations could be doing to be I, able to i i looked at what we do in as, as as instructors and how we can 
because it's counterproductive to put a lot of pressure on people to learn things quickly. It, it, learning takes the time it takes, and mm -hmm. you know, and I, you'd like it to all be over in 15 weeks, but you're kidding yourself. You know, <laughs> you can get them enough yeah. to pass. You know, sometimes what we can do is 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 is, is get people enough knowledge uh, to to get on that first rung in the ladder and then when they're working with with uh, with our customers they can gain more knowledge in the workplace so so it's actually i, th I think a, as much as as cramming the knowledge into them it's 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 actually changing their mindset to make them or they might already be very curious people and, and really interested in finding out more and giving them the tools so that they know how to to investigate that's that's the important thing and maybe and I'm, I'm thinking at, at, at the moment as to how we can remove the pressure over exams to, to mm -hmm. pass and maybe how we can go to, to do do something that's a bit more as you go along with coursework and participation in in in, in the in the in the courses that we teach so so i i think there is much more that we could do and i think we should always be looking at how we can how we can change what we do to, to give a better experience to our consultants so that so that they're less stressed and ca and can 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 work more effectively no definitely and i think you've kind of answered what i was going to ask you next um, mm -hmm. within that answer i was just kind of going to say what sort of do you think has been done well so far and what we could do to improve um which i know you've mm -hmm. just kind of touched on <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> already well it, it's about you know you never get there it's not mm -hmm. a it's a process that you, you you always should be looking at what you're doing and 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 you know there needs to be a certain amount of stress in what you're doing it, you know no stress and you're just not interested and you yeah. fall asleep <laughs> um, so you need enough there's a balance you need enough stress to keep you interested and motivated to carry on learning and, and finding out more about about this, this this stuff but not too much that, that it, it causes anxiety and and that's you know you learn nothing when you're anxious if you're worried about something you you that's that's the 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 focus of your mind is on what you're worrying about, not on learning new stuff. So, so you know that that's definitely where we need to be. So it's it's a constant process, I'd say, Ellen. And yeah. I I would look at all of you know ask all of the managers in in Kubrick to look at the the what they're trying to do in their department and how they can make it less stressful for people. How they can make it an easier process. We're in a business. We have to we have to be profitable. Nobody yeah. nobody's arguing about that. But there are ways that you can you can tone down the stress and, and, and stop unnecessary stress and stop negative cultures developing as well. You know, the, yeah. the macho male culture it's not, it doesn't help anybody. It's not it's not the modern world anymore. It's not it's, it's at odds with the modern world. And we, we, we should when we see cultures like that developing, we should say that's not really our way. That's not the way we do things as a company. No, definitely. I think I think big thing is just like educating like i think mm. in terms of you know opening these conversations like we've just been discussing throughout you know about anxiety you know depression anything like that that people might be going through and i think just to know how colleagues can support you know there are other colleagues that might be go going through it they might not be going through it themselves but just to be able to you know notice any changes or you know just be more of like an ally to them that they can you know speak <coughs> to them and i think you know the more training that goes on in terms of mental health i think will just benefit organizations as a whole um because i think it's amazing what you guys do as the mental health first aiders for the company and i think just having more and more of those throughout i think it's just going to be able to like trickle down effect that people will have just more of an understanding um because especially for some people that you know haven't gone through it themselves or don't have the knowledge i think to be able to have that they will be, a, be able to be a bit more understanding um to those that are going through certain things. And like you said, it's really hard obviously to concentrate and take things in when you are you know, anxious or you're going through things. And it can end up just hindering your performance yes. in the long run. It makes people miserable. It makes people not enjoy <laughs> their, their lives and, and not be, be as productive and as happy as, as, as they can. And that's, you know, you sh we should be doing that for our colleagues, enabling yeah. them to have, you know, We'll be a, a more successful, profitable company if if our people are are happy and and productive and and, and interested in their work, Absolutely. but but not overwhelmed by it. Definitely, and I think having that sort of identifying that like healthy hybrid model as well. We've spoken mm. about has massively helped. You know, pre pandemic, uh, for a lot of people, being in our office five days a week can be a lot on just not only that, just a work life balance. Yes. Um, and I think now that you've got the opportunity where you can say 
hey, you know, I'm having a lot on today. You know, I'd rather just, you know, get my work done at home. And whereas before, you know, being in five days a week, for yeah. some people can actually be more of a trigger. Um, so I think identifying that, you know, especially at Kubrick, we have that model where, you know, you can work from home, you can be in the office, because I know it can be work both ways. You know, some people prefer to be around a lot of people and that's how they thrive and work better. Whereas for other people, they're having a tough day. They might prefer just, I'd rather just get be at home, work and get it done. Um, so I think, you know, that's quite important to identify, you know, what works best for you in that aspect as well. Yeah, there's an interesting dynamic. And I'm just thinking back to the <laughs> massive change that happened in my workplace to, to from, from where I was in the office a lot to, to now when I'm, 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 I'm virtually not. I think when I work, when I went into the office, I put on an act all the time. I, I you know, I was I, I led a department. Um, a lot of people reported to me. I, I, I was their manager and I. I I was probably quite difficult to get close to. I was because I would, you know, uh, I've got things and barriers that I'd put up. I think now I'm working at home. I feel much more relaxed and much more open to be who exactly who I am. And you, you know, you you, you get what you, you see. That's 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 who I am. And and I think that's that's maybe true of a lot of people mm-hmm. because you're in your own home environment. You're you're more relaxed and more comfortable and feel more secure. So you're more able to let people in. And, 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 and there is that aspect of it. So it's not all bad. It's not all people being isolated and, and not having, having you know, it, 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 it's and, and finding that balance is 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 what's mm. what's right. And finding it uh, is another thing that's different for everybody. Exactly. Yeah. So. And I think that's important to take away is that everyone is different. What might work for you might be different to me, to someone else. And yes. I think it is important that you shouldn't feel, oh, my gosh, that doesn't work for me. It's really important just I think to identify yes what does work for you the sooner that you realize that you've got symptoms of anxiety or or, or, or other negative feelings in inside you that the sooner that you find somebody who you can talk to about that and 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 get help that the, the the sooner you'll be happier and, and and you'll address it you know it's, it's not it isn't something people should be ashamed of anymore it, it's not you, you know we're we're a, a diverse company and and we accept all all people um, who, who, you know, we, we've employed you. We, we, we've seen that you have skills and talents, um, and and we will help you fulfil your potential. And and the way we, we do that is is by not stigmatising any any problems that people have, problems that you know we might have caused in the workplace. To be to be fair, with stress, um, so so we, we 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 want to give you the facilities to address them. And that's that's yeah. what we should do. Definitely, and I think what you said about stress. I mean. I feel like any job you do or anything, there's going to be stress. There's going to be stressful moments. And like what you said, if you're not getting stressed, yeah, then... <laughs> you're probably not <laughs> engaged. <laughs> um, and I think it is just, you're going to face sometimes, maybe it might be more so for some people, less for others, but there are going to be challenging times for you. And I think learning how to cope with them, the sooner the better, as you've identified, is really, really important because everyone goes through it, whether it's in personal life, whether it's work life, you're going to encounter them at some point. Yeah. And I think really important just to learn how to cope with what that. works for you what what works for you you know get over the if you if you're struggling get over the acute problems that you're having at the moment and then try and find out you know is it meditation that works for you is it going down the gym and beating the hell out of a, <laughs> a punch bag it does that work for you is it cycling like me is it swimming or is it sitting in a garden it, we're all different and 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 it, different solutions for different people it's definitely and i think just to finish up Do you have anything in particular that you'd like people, listeners, to take away from this podcast if there's one bit of advice you could give? So don't bury your mental health problems uh, under the carpet and think they'll they'll just get better on their own. Unless the stress goes away, they probably won't. Or unless you find a way of dealing with the stress, they probably won't. So take that first step and talk to somebody. It doesn't have to be a mental health first aider. It could be could be a mum or dad, it could be um, a sibling, could be a friend, um, could be a colleague at work. You know, whoever you can, you feel that you've got a bit of trust and mm-hmm. and, and and friendship with. Take that first step uh, and talk about the, the possibilities for, for addressing. Because lots lots of the problems that you face are will be eminently solvable and, and treatable. So that that's that's that would would be my my tip is is don't let these things fester and hide take that first step and talk to somebody about them definitely i think 
key there is that there's help for everyone. There is. Kubrick is a very inclusive place. <laughs> Anyone, anything they're going through. And I think it's important to say, you know, regardless of how small or how big it might be to someone, there's always help. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're suffering from things like anxiety, it's big for you. You know, I, I minimise it now and think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, because I've known people with lots more serious anxiety than, than I've had, which is much more debilitating. But it felt pretty nasty when I, mm -hmm. when I didn't understand what it was. I thought, you know... Maybe I was having a heart attack. Maybe I was going to die. That sort of thing. <laughs> well, dude, that's what goes through yeah. your mind, you know. So, so you know, th that's happens to any everybody, any anybody. It's uh, you know, don't let it, don't let it fester. Get 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 talking to people and get some help. No, definitely. Well, thank you so much for joining us, David. Oh, I feel okay. very uplifted <laughs> after that now to go back and work. Good. But I fun. think definitely, thank yeah. You. I think taking away is that it's just important to be able to speak up. You know, mental health is extremely important. And, you know, you need to make sure that you're putting yourself first as well, like your physical health, as well as your mental health. But um, thank you so much for joining us. And oh, thank, thank you for having me. No, yeah, it's a great pleasure. Thanks, Helen. Thank Take you as well for listening, but thank you. Yeah. Sure.